15 years ago, I was injured by a, a landmine and I almost died in Somalia. I was evacuated to Nairobi, Kenya because the medical resources in Somalia were not satisfactory to keep me alive. And a pilot came into Somalia to get me out. His name's Joe Moran, who I'm going to meet here in a few minutes. Hi, Joe. Hi, Sorry about all this. But, but how are you? Thanks for coming out. We really appreciate it. Thanks for finding me. The voice looks to us sound very familiar. I wrote him a thank you letter. I think I wrote him a couple thank you letters. And he wrote me a letter back. And that was 10, 11, 12 years ago, I think. Until today. He read about it in the Irish Times, I believe, our Irish newspaper last week, that I was in town working on cluster munitions. You know, you don't have a bad day when you almost die. And uh, so he was part of that gift. What I did, it was one of many flights, but it did stand out that there were so many things that could have been slightly different. It was pretty a tough trip, I'm sure, a traumatic trip. You know, I was mostly unconscious the whole time and uh, had to find a very low level altitude-wise because the higher you go, the lower your blood pressure gets. And I was dying in the plane. I had heard that someone asked him yesterday, why do you remember Ken? And he said, because there's so much blood in the plane. I mean, uh, how do you thank a guy for saving your life? It's not about my story. It's promoting the cluster munitions ban. And if I could help as a survivor prevent further stories like mine, it would have been worth it. Distinguished delegates, I now propose that the conference adopt the text of the convention as contained in document number CCN-77. This stage of the process is over. We've got the text of the treaty, but now we've got to get states to come to Oslo in December to actually sign the treaty. And then you've got a process of getting ratifications in domestic parliaments, which means putting through national legislation. We need to get that legislation put through in perhaps 30 countries in order for the treaty to enter into force and become an internationally binding legal instrument. So an important stage is over, but there's still a lot of hard work to do. It's of course hugely important to acknowledge the role that civil society has played in this, but you know, we work together as people best and as humanity best when those of us in civil society can play a huge, important and dynamic part in supporting governments in doing the things that we know that they need to do and informing them as they struggle in, in the ways in which they try to do that and work towards doing that. I think this process is just, as I said last Saturday when we all met, the most extraordinary example of the best of who we actually are, responding in some ways to the worst of who we are. And we should be incredibly proud of what's been achieved over the last two weeks. And to be able to turn around to people in my own office this morning and say, you know what, today the world really is just that little bit better than it was yesterday. And everything that has been achieved here in the last couple of weeks is really, really quite extraordinary.